And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is pop, pop, pop goes the popcorn here. It's a crochet snuggle sack for adults and children alike. Today we have two patterns in one for adult and child as mentioned. And I'm gonna go through the basics of this pattern first and then we're gonna dive right into the pattern as we go. So on screen is a picture of the pattern that we're gonna be working with today. You're going to notice that it has red writing and yellow writing. So child size, this is all the information that you need for the different colors that are, are involved. And then the adult size here is the other stuff that you need. Of course the adult's bigger so you need more yarn to do so and it's highlighting what you need. You need an eight millimeter size L crochet hook in order to play. So whenever we're working on the instructions, you'll notice that there's red writing and yellow writing. So we wanna pay attention to the one. So today's uh, tutorial is gonna take you through the child version but I wanna highlight the differences that we do as we go along in the adult, uh, for the adult size as we do so you understand that. There's also a crochet diagram then on page number three. You will notice that is the kernel that you have there and you will notice that it's a really cool pattern. So let's take a look at the pattern itself, the actual picture and let me explain a few things that'll make it a lot easier for yourself. So here's a picture of the snuggle sacks without anybody in them. So there's a front and the back of this box that you see and my first the question to the designer was it, does it actually taper out in order to go like a box like this? And she goes yeah if you look carefully at the bottom here we do half double crochets down here and then we switch over to double crochets and it gives it the appearance that the bottom is smaller than the top which it truly is because of that fact. And it happens on both the adult and the small size and I'm gonna show you a cheating technique. I don't know if I'm allowed to but I'm going to anyway. And I'm gonna show you a cheating technique to avoid yourself from excessive counting. So if you don't like to count too much uh, stick with me. It's gonna be great. So then you have to do some kernels that you have here and in the child size we have two colors of kernels to make it look like it's over buttered and etc. It's really quite cute. There's a total of seven of each color here and in the adult size there's more of that that you have and we'll get to that as well when we go there. You'll notice that it's sewn to the outside here to make it look like it's falling out of position as it goes and of course you will have more yarn left over as well so you can add more kernels if you want. So there's nothing behind this particular box to hold these kernels. These kernels are sewn together so they, they actually create the flap at the top. So there's no kernels on the actual back of the uh, back of the box so it's only on the front. So if you want more kernels on the back so you have to get more yarn in order to do so. But again it's really quite nice and easy. So let me tell you a little bit about the strips you see because that will help you out as well. So knowing that the designer made it look like it's smaller at the base and then it's bigger at the top with uh, switching out to half double crochets. When it comes to the white strip it's just four rows of double crochet. That's all it is. So the concentration of making it more narrow looking is actually done in the red and every time you get to the bottom section here you go down to a half double crochet, half double crochet and then switch back up to a double crochet to continue. So what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna have you place a marker after we get through the first section here and what you can just do is look for that marker as long as you're not adding any additional stitches you look for that marker and say okay when I get past that marker I'm gonna switch my stitch down and then I'm gonna come back up and then when I get to that marker again I'll switch back up to double crochet. It's just an easier way to do it. Of course the designer has provided those uh, measurements for you as far as stitch counts in order to make it as evenly as possible but I found with myself that's kind of how I did it. Uh, once I realized that it's consistent across the board uh, I just add it up in and you can make it look wor like it's working as well. So on the top here is just a round circle here and it's on both there. There's different sizes so the pattern looks so huge because of the circle because there's instructions for every one of them and then what you just do is that you just single crochet the word pop into the circle as you go and then sew it down to the face of the particular uh, snuggle sack. So it's really not a hard thing to do right from the start to finish. So let's go back to the set of instructions. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So here's a close up of the instructions and what I want to point out to you here is that each one of the row strips that we did are consisting of four rows each. Whether it's doing a strip of red or a strip of white it's always four rows. And in the red we always decrease at the bottom section which gives you a lot more information that you have to follow. So the nice thing about this particular pattern is that you can see that we're gonna do the 86. So if you're doing a child we'll chain 86 but if you're doing the adult you'll chain 112. And the only real difference that it comes down to on the box itself is that when you're here 
and you're starting to do the, the particular um, half double crochets and, and double crochets you'll notice that the stitch count is different. So it says one half double crochet in each of the next 34 if that's child but it's 43 if it's actually um, 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 adult size. So then when it switches back over then you'll notice that it will change. So what I'm gonna have you do adults is that I'm gonna have you follow what's on the pattern here but I'm gonna concentrate on the child size here in today's tutorial and every time you see a difference in the pattern you will notice that it's highlighted with the different colors that you see within the pattern itself. And what you've seen me here is that it says you need to repeat a certain amount of rows. So for the child once we do rows 1 through 12 we have to repeat 5 through 12 two more times that gives you the box and if you're doing the adult size you repeat uh, rows um, uh, 5 through 12 four more times in order to make it much bigger. So the adult size is actually so big that an adult and depending on the size of the adult of course a child can fit inside comfortably or two children can fit into the snuggle sack or you can make one snuggle sack for each one of the kids as well. So in the kernels as I mentioned is that there's a difference. So in the kernels it says make seven of each B and E. So there's two different colors so you end up with 14 kernels but in the adult size it's 13 each of B and C so that will be 26 kernels and of course if you have yarn left over you can make more kernels on top of that as well. So let's uh, get started. Let's start our box now and let's begin. So I'm breaking my rule today. Usually I have a white background. What, what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna put a blue background because I'm using white yarn to make it easier for you to be able to follow along. So every time we're using white just expect that. So that's going against my norm. So for the child size you're gonna start off with chaining of 86. If you're doing the adult it'll be 112. Just refer to the instructions for the adult if you'd like to do the adult size version. So just uh, chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and go either all the way to 86 or 112 depending on your size. So now that my chain is done regardless of what size that you're working on you're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So just count it back. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. Turn it around and get the back loop only of that fourth one away and you want to double crochet. So the nice thing about this particular pattern it's really easy. So whenever we're in the white we're always gonna double crochet. It's awesome. So you're just gonna move yourself down the back loop of each one of the chains just putting in a double crochet. Please do that all the way across for your chain. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of the chain and it's pretty easy peasy right? So just double crocheting one into each. So as I mentioned that there are four rows that make up the strip of the white in the box. So what you're just gonna do is just turn your work and you are just going to chain up three. So just one, two and three and that counts as the first half double crochet that you see and then you just go to the next one and you double crochet yourself back. So each one of the white strips equals four rows of double crochet. So this is one row, two, three and four and if you look at the instructions it says two to four rows just do exactly what I just said. So then we're gonna then switch to red for four rows and then that's where we're gonna do the decrease skinny part of the bottom of the box and then we're gonna return back then to the white. So the repeat pattern for this particular box does not start until after we're done the four rows of these whites. So what I'm gonna leave for you now is that I want you to finish four rows of just double crochet just back and forth nice and easy and then meet me back here and I'm gonna show you how to switch the colors and then we're gonna show you how to be able to uh, make the bottom of the box appear skinnier with the stitch work as well. So please do that and meet me back here in just a moment. So now I'm at the end of four rows. So one, two, three and four. Now I'm done this color. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to completely finish off this yarn. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and just cut a little bit of extra strands there and I want to just pull it through this loop and I want you to weave it in and out of the stitch work that is in here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to get it stuck underneath and then we can bury it as we go. So now we're about to switch to red for four rows and the red is where all the fancy footwork happens but don't flip out because it's really not that hard. So I'm just weaving it in and, in and out about, about two or three inches. Nice and easy. So just before you put the white away I want you just to cut a spare piece of white string. We're gonna use that as a stitch marker then later on. So, so let's begin to do four rows using red. So let's take our work and now turn it. And we're ready to go and let's get into the top of the first one that we were working with where we left off. So this is where I woven in the end of leaving that for now. I want you to take this strand here and make a slip knot and I want you to insert it onto the hook. 
like that and pull through. So now what I want you to do is that lay this straggler down on top of the line so it gets stuck underneath position and now this time what we're going to do is that we're actually at the bottom of the um, of the box. So we're gonna start off with doing it narrow first and chain two in this particular pattern does not count as a stitch so we're gonna chain two. That doesn't count as anything it's a builder. So into the same stitch I want you to half double crochet. Okay, so whenever we do half double or chain twos it's just never a stitch it's just a builder. So now working across you're going to then trap your stragglers in a position and now for the next 34 and you have to count this there's no choice of that. So you have to count 34 half double crochets in a row. So this is two and three and four and I'll meet you at 34 in just a moment. So I've now just hit the 34 mark. With the stitch marker just pull this out and I just want you to just to grab one piece of the stitch and I want you to put in a stitch marker that goes across. Sorry just to get right across that stitch and just get in a stitch marker and just pull it through and just kind of like pull it through that loop and toss it to the other side because when you come back on the other side you'll see this on the other side quite easily. When you get back to this marker you're gonna switch back to half double crochet. So for the remaining of the row going all the way to the top of the box it's now going to be double crochets. So the neat thing about is this is that when we come back we're gonna just start do a double crochet until we get back to the stitch marker and then switch back then to half double crochet as you hit the bottom of the box. So that's what gives it the more narrow look at the base. So you're gonna do four rows just like this. So you're gonna come up, start up half double crochet, switch over to double, come back double and then switch back the half, then go back again half, switch back to double and then coming down double, switch back to half and finish off. So that's how you do that and let me just uh, get you uh, beyond this row. So let's get to the end of the row with double crocheting all the way to the top of the box. So I'm making my way to the top of the box just double crocheting and then coming into the very last one and then turn. So now we're gonna come back down and then we're gonna double crochet ourselves down and then as soon as we hit this stitch marker again we're then going to switch to half double crochet then to complete to the remaining of the bottom of the box. So to start this round of this sorry this row this is here is row number six and so six, six chain up three because you're double crocheting that counts as the first one and then double crochet yourself all the way to your stitch marker and then switch on over back to half double crochet. Please do that and I'll see you at the half double crochet mark later on in this row. I've now come all the way down and I'm one stitch away from the stitch marker. So in the stitch right before the stitch marker I want you to switch to half double crochet and then you'll half double crochet in the other one just like there. The reason why I'm, I'm switching one earlier is that you'll appear a gap if you do it and that's why the designers are off by one. It's not uh, because they can't count it's just because of the fact that um, it looks better if you do um, if you don't do the same stitch right on top of each other. So we just wanna pull the stitch marker through and then you'll see that next time you come back through this way and then you're just going to continue along then to the base of the box just one half double crochet in each. So you, you can either counted it all the way to this mark or you could have just looked at it and then just made that judgment call. As long as you don't add any extra stitches you're good and you can uh, improvise really quite easily and make it a lot easier on yourself as well. So half double crochet yourself all the way to the bottom of the box. So I'm coming all the way to the bottom of the box and I'm half double crocheting myself right into the very end. Remember that there will appear to be two stitches at the very base the one stitch uh, is not a stitch it's just a builder so don't uh, forget that that this here is just an extra. So it just appears there. So you're just gonna double crochet right over top of this one. So now we're gonna continue to go back up the other side. So now we're gonna go back half double crochet until you get to the stitch marker and then you're gonna switch back to double crochet going all the way to the top of the box. So remember to start we're gonna chain two and then go into the very first one that's part of that and half double crochet because the chain two doesn't count as anything. So you're gonna half double crochet yourself to the sti stitch marker and then switch over to double crochet and head back towards the top of the box. Please do this row and this is uh, one of the final repeats that we have and this is row number seven. So I'm continuing now to the top of the box. So this is row number three and I'm doing my double crochets because I hit the stitch marker and I switched over. And so they're gonna turn our work and do the final row of of red before switching back to white. 
So let's turn our work. So I want to double crochet myself now. I'm at the top of the box and right the stitch before the stitch marker I'm gonna switch back to half double crochet and half double crochet right to the base. So remember for this one then is going to be chaining a three. So we're gonna switch back to white after this row and uh, we're gonna make it quite nice and easy. So it's just four rows of just white all just double crochet back and forth really quite easy and then you're gonna do the red as you know it now. So this section of the red plus the next four rows of white make up the repeat pattern that it says to repeat round our rows from five to twelve. So you're gonna repeat that a set number of times in order to get it to look right. And so for the child I believe it's uh, repeating it uh, two more times and then um, what we have then for the adult I believe it's repeating it four times. So it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to follow and I am going to improvise my pattern a little bit more is that I have an idea for this that I want to use afterward. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add an extra layer of red to the outside of the box. So you'll notice that the photo has white on the outside. I'm gonna add an extra strip of red um, to both sides of the boxes because I have something else in mind. Um, and then you can improvise that as well. So if you have a bigger child and you wanna make it a little bit larger, you can just always add this to the other side that you have for, for both sides of your boxes and you make sure you do both panels the same way. So head on to the bottom of your box and then you're gonna switch over to uh, red. Don't forget that you're gonna change the stitch at the stitch marker that's coming up to half double crochet as you get there and then the white is just a breeze of just double crochet for, th for four rows. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this row. So now coming to the bottom of my box, my four rows are complete. You should be able to count those as well if you haven't been counting as you go. So one, two, three, and four and then that's it. So we're gonna switch back to white. So here's my recommendation. You're gonna do four rows of um, white again and then you're gonna do exactly what I just showed you again for four rows. Here's the thing. So when you go to start red up again, make sure you count the first time you go across to the 34 as it suggests. If for the child size it's bigger, if it's uh, the, the adult size. And you can get that off to the right and then you can kind of follow it up. And if you follow it up, see I've been following it straight like this. So uh, it's really quite easy. So I would recommend you count at least the first one. Mark your stitch marker and then you can play and do the same thing. Remember to finish off, we're just going to just trim our work. Trim the strand and then what we're gonna do is reintroduce white back in. So just pull this through. So I'm gonna leave the rest of the panel for you to be able to do and repeat it the number of times. The photograph for this is on the pattern itself so if you wanna look and, and verify the number of strips. Of course you can add an extra if you want to. It just makes sure to try to keep it in balance so it looks believable as well. So try not to make it an odd number in the front. So you'll notice that there's white on both sides of the box on the sides. If, if you wanna make it slightly bigger then you can add some red strips there if you want to. So we're gonna just start off with the slip knot to begin again. Let's turn our work coming into the top just like that. <laughs> if I could just do it. So we're just coming into the top of the half double crochet and just join it. Pulling it through and through and then you're going to just lay down this line here like we had before. Chain up three which counts as a double crochet and just double crochet in each stitch going across back and forth for four rows and then switch back to red and then switch back to white again um, after the four rows of red are done and etc. So please do this now and uh, we will get um, started then on something else after you have this done and you'll need to do two panels of this as well. So at this part of the tutorial you have your panels done. You're gonna have the front and the back and this is the small one. This is the adult size so it's actually a difference. So for myself I made an extra strip on the small one on both sides and it's red so I'm ending on red on the outside. I had extra yarn that I could do that with so that's something that I wanted for myself because you can fit a bigger child than that if you wished. So now it's about the kernels. So I made some changes and I wanna show you what I did um, but it's not part of the pattern and it's improvisation, right? Fake it or make it. 
So each one of the popcorn boxes has a set number of kernels. So you're gonna notice a, a darker yellow and a lighter yellow. And there's going to be in the small size there's seven of each of those and in the larger size there's 13 each of the two flavors that you see. So it gives you the illusion of buttered popcorn. Really quite awesome. Now I've seen these in person. What it happens with this is that these kernels you get sewn together so you sew them to make the flap. So there's technically nothing in behind this here and it's only one sided. So these kernels don't here on the back side of the project. However, I'm not a strong sewer and I decided to improvise and again this is not part of the pattern and just, just because you're a crochet crowder and I'll get to show you what I did. So I decided to make a butter flap. Let me show you what that is. So here's me working on the panel learning how to do all of this and what I did is that I kind of laid it out and I got rid of my loose ends in each of the kernels and I had to get rid of that right. And so I was gonna lay them all out and etc. and I realized that I'm not a strong sewer and I have a really problem if I can actually see through the project and so therefore I was kind of getting all kind of nervous about it. So what I decided to do is that because I'm not a strong sewer I decided that I had to improvise a little bit and to improvise once it was all laid out like so I realized that I'm gonna be able to see through some of the areas and and it's just more of a thing for myself that it's just more mental than anything. It still looks great. So what I decided to do is lay it out like this and I was sitting up here and I was kind of laying it all out and uh, of course my kitty cat was joining me here. So this is kind of like a slideshow. So what I decided to do is that I was getting all nervous about it. So I put it onto the table and I laid it all out again. See my configuration is different than it was before. So you know how it all lays out is basically up to you. This is like popcorn falling out of the box. So what I decided to do is lay it all up again and I took some paper and I taped four sheets together and then I cut it right where I think the popcorn is gonna be underneath. And so I made it to the width of the particular panel and then I just put it up here and I did one side and then I folded this side over and matched the other side. Here's the cool thing about it is that once I did it I realized that I could do half double crochets two together on the edge to make this perfect angle. It's just a fluke ladies and gentlemen just a fluke. So what I decided to do is that I made it like that and so this is my butter flap just like you saw in the piece of paper. So what this is is that it's just chaining to match the, the width. Okay, it's not chained right directly to the project. I'll tell you how I attached it. And so I just laid down the chain and said okay that's the width of it and then I went second chain from the hook and I single crocheted across and then I did eight rows of half double crochet. So in the very first two stitches it's a half double crochet two together and then a half double crochet across and in the final two stitches it's half double crochet two together and I, I did eight rows like that and then I finished off. So in my particular size because I have an extra red on both sides I used up half of a ball of yarn, the big balls that we see right here. I used half of it just for that. So I did a flap on both front and the back and it's just again for my own personal well-being. So what then I did is then I laid the project back down. So I put the flap in, it's sewn and basically I kind of laid it all out. So when I sewed the flap, here's the downfall. Okay, there's always a downfall to improvisation. When you sew the flap you will notice that in the original picture way back in the very beginning here is that some of the popcorn appears that it's inside the box. So it's kind of sunken in behind and then some of it looks like it's over the box. Because I put the butter flap on there there's no way that you can sink a kernel in behind. I'm not even gonna worry about it. Okay, so that's just my thing. So what I decided to do is that I whip stitched this together just like I'm going to do kind of with the outsides. You can also single crochet it together and what you can just do is that when I did it is that I used the same color yarn. So this red strip it's just red strand here and then when it changed over I used a white strip. So you have to do multiple yarn strands in order to get that. What I did not want to do is sew it all together with one color because I don't want the final edge to look like it's the butter seeping over and I didn't want the red to be on top of the white and vice versa. So once I had that all sewn in I or all sewn up I put it back into pl position like so, laid everything back out and then I started sewing it on the pieces. Now this is considered the back for me. I'm doing a double sided project and I'll explain more I guess in a future date. And then what I was gonna do is that I'm not gonna put the pop on this one because it's the back but I laid it out but on the front one I wanna put the pop label in first before I put the kernels that fall over the box in order to do so. I also made more kernels than that were supposed to and because of that I had extra to work with as well. And so when all was said and done everything was sewn into place. 
the world was all happy again. And I really do gotta pick up my balls <laughs> from the floor. But uh, this is what it looks like here all sewn in. And basically the butter flap is in behind. If you look really carefully you can kinda see it but I'd rather see that than just blank space. So it's just something for yourself to consider in order to do this. So I know that was long winded but sometimes you have to make it or fake it or fake it. So let's begin to show you how to make one kernel. It's the same pattern for all of them. And then I'm going to show you then the edge of the, the box. So here's page number three and the kernel diagram is on page number three. Really quite simple. There's only four uh, revolutions to it and number four does not go all the way around. So you're gonna end up with a big kind of pop out here and then uh, you'll have some additional pops then right here at the end. So you can really kind of have a lot of fun with this and because of this it's really quite easy. It's not a hard thing to do and so you have to make then the equal number of colors. So for the small one you'll make seven of the one color, seven of the other and for the large 13 of one color, 13 of the other. For myself in the way that I'm in improvisation I actually made 45 of these if you can imagine. <laughs> I'm all popcorned out and I never thought I'd ever say that. So let's show you how to make one of these. Let's grab your yarn. Let's begin. So as we begin you're gonna notice that the popcorn is not sitting flat at all. So it's not one of those things and you don't want it to sit flat. Popcorn is not a flat project, right? So when it's being laid down you'll notice that things will pop up and down and it's actually kind of fun. So we have to make sure that we're looking for that. If you're looking for flat then this is not um, the popcorn for you but a popcorn of course is not flat. So let's create a slip knot to begin and we are going to do a total of chaining of three. So one, two, I have this pattern in my brain so hard it's not even funny. <laughs> so first chain from the hook I want you to put in a total of eight half double crochet. So wrap the, wrap in the hook and pull through all three and we want a total of eight. So the first one that we started with does not count as anything. So, so this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you have eight in there. So the chain two that you skipped over it doesn't count as anything. So you should have eight and then you just join it to the beginning. So that was round number one. So you can see it's nice and fabulous. Let's begin round number two. We're gonna chain two. Does not count as anything and in the very first stitch I want you to put in two half double crochets. And then in every stitch then going all the way around is gonna be two into each one. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this round. Coming to the last stitch all the way around is just gonna be two half double crochets and then we attach it to the beginning once again. So the third round again nice and easy. We're going to chain up two does not count as anything and in the same one right that you attached it is gonna be one half double crochet. So here's the repeat pattern for this one is that the next one will be two half double crochets into the same one. So one and two and then the next one is gonna be just one by itself. So one. So the repeat pattern is two into the next one, one and two and then the next one after that is just one by itself. Please do that all the way around for round number three. And when you get all the way around when you're keeping in count there should be two into the last one and then join to the very top of the first one. So this is round number four. So what we're going to do to start off with this one is that we are going to jump over to the fourth stitch. So skip over. So skip the one, okay, two, three and four and I want you to wrap the hook and it's a long way away. So what I want you to do is just go in and pull and pull, 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 okay and then finish it. So pull through two and two. This is a double crochet. So then wrap again going into the same one and pull, 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 pull but not as much and then finish it and then the third time going in pull it a little bit more. Okay so I pulled it the most in the first one, not as much in the second, not as much in the third and then the final three will just be regular and that will give it an extended look to it. It's a long way over so you should pull and give it some slack. And then once you have all those six in you come into the next one and you just slip stitch. So right into the next one. So it's right underneath. Just look for it. If you're wrong it's popcorn. It's okay. Every popcorn is unique. So just pull through slip stitch and go into the next one. Slip stitch. So there's two slip stitches in a row and the very next one is going to be four double crochets. So one, two, 
three and four. And then we come back to the very next stitch down, slip stitch and slip stitch into the next one and then do that again. So right into the next one another four double crochets. So one, two, three and four and then come into the very next one slip stitch in okay and then come to the next one slip stitch and do the final one. So there's gonna be four it looks like a bear's paw to my point of view. So you got a big uh, thumb here or a big uh, toe and then you got the fourth one going in now and in the last one here the next stitch is gonna be six double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then just slip stitch to the very next one and that will pull it nice and circular and this will give it a bit of a puff which is what I talked about of not sitting flat. So just coming into the next one just slip stitch in and pull through. So that's it. So now you're just gonna be left with this extra strand here. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut it and what I probably recommend is get, you, I did it at the end but um, what I have a lot of work ahead of me now because I left it to the end but all the kernels now will have the tails. So just get rid of the middle tail. This is underneath the work anyway so just cut it down more narrow and the last one here you wanna use a darning needle and you wanna feed it in. This yarn really compresses down. It's amazing I'm able to get it through these small eyes of the needle and then I just wanna drag it through the work on the underside so it's the back side. Drag it down and then drag it back up like so and then drag it down. So in and out three times because three times is a charm like so and then just trim it down and then that one is good to be used on the project. So I need you to do all your kernels. This is what it looks like. A lot of fun right? And that's really kind of cool. So you'll do seven of this color, seven of the other color if you're doing the small or you'll do 13 of this color or 13 of the other color and 13 of the other color if you're doing the adult size. So do that now and I'll see you back here and we'll start doing the attaching. For those that like the improvisation of adding the butter flap here's what mine looks like here and what I wanted to do is that I want to attach it to the top of the box. How do I know which one is the top? Well the actual strips here of the red will be bigger than the other side. So if you're looking at this and the box is turned see, see the difference? Okay so I can tell that this is the bigger side. So what I wanna do is that I wanna lay the butter flap down and on the one side I just wanna stretch it right to the edge. So let's just pull it into the camera view here and what I'm gonna do is just take a piece of yarn, spare piece of yarn going into the outside of the butter flap I don't even know why I'm calling it the butter flap, I just am. So then I'm just going to the outside of the red and what I'm just gonna do is just pull this through and through and then pull it through the loop and lock it. So I'll be able to get that out afterward. Now I'm gonna go to the other side, stretch it right to the end on the other side and I wanna put my hook into the other side here and this one and doing the same again and this is just holding the butter flap into position as you sew it like that. So what I'm gonna do is now just stretch it. The butter flap has a bit of um, tension to it so it's okay and I wanna stretch it and I wanna mark what I believe is the center point of my butter flap just like that. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm not gonna line it right with the middle one. I'm just gonna line it off because I have to go across anyway. So I know that if I lock it here that it won't move on either side and then I can start sewing it together. So as I've already mentioned in my long uh, synopsis and how I did this, I'm going to then attach the butter flap using the same color yarn. So this section here will be red yarn, white, red and etc. So let me show you how to whip stitch these stuff together and you kind of use the same technique with the, the, the popcorn kernels as well. So now that I kind of have it locked in with this one here I'm going to start on the one side and I'm gonna come right into the outside stitch and right into the red only of the box. 
and I'm gonna pull but I'm not gonna pull all the way through. I'm going to insert the needle into the slip knot and then pull it tight. So I'm gonna take this straggler now and I'm gonna go into the very next stitch available on the butter flap and go to the other side just laying it down so it catches underneath. And all I'm just gonna do is kind of match it as I go. I wanna go into chain work of this section here. I never wanna go into like a major gap. If you go into the gap then it keeps the gap open. So you're just gonna work your way across. You'll notice that my strand was not very long. I don't need to waste a lot of yarn and I know that from experience of already doing this once that it doesn't take a lot of yarn to go across this little section. So I'm gonna have you, if you're doing this particular concept, I want you to sew your butter flap. If you are not doing a butter flap at all, then you just can skip ahead and then you can go and sew your kernels together. So once you get to the outside of this one here, you're done. So you're just gonna, this is gonna be covered by popcorn anyway, but you wanna take care, so you just wanna tie it into a knot and then weave in your remaining into the actual underneath of the stitches. Go one, and two and three. So if you're doing the butter flap then just do all this thing. This is now into position so you can get rid of this uh, straggler here because this is permanently locked and you can just trim it right down to the project and continue along to sew the rest. So now at that part of the tutorial where we're going to make the label. So I haven't done any of the kernels yet to it because I would wanna have the kernels and I wanna make extra and make it look like it's following and I actually may just put a kernel over part of the label itself just to make it kind of more realistic. Remember the more kernels you do the more yarn you will use. So it's actually kind of neat. So you'll notice that the pop label is bigger on one than the other. Of course it's adult and um, a child. So what's gonna happen is that for the child you're gonna stop at a certain point in the tutorial and then for the adult you're just gonna continue along. So if you have extra yarn left over I'm thinking of the last round of this pop label to be in red just to make it fun. Remember creativity is all about what you can think of and maybe you wanna make something even, even cooler. It's up to you. And then what I would do is put this label on first and then before you um, put the two panels together then this is in sewn in a position. It's easier to get to than having to slide your hand in behind uh, the, the inside the snuggle sack if the other side is attached already. So let's begin working on the pop. Let's take you to the instructions and show you what you're going to be up to this time. So on page number two you're going to see the label and you're gonna see the label carries you all the way up and then it stops here on round number 10 for the child size and then if you're doing the bigger size you just continue along. The fabulous thing about it is that once you understand the growth rate on this thing you can go as big as you want to. Maybe you wanna lay it down and make a different size. That's a completely up to you. So it's a really neat idea. We're gonna start on uh, round number one for all sizes. I'm gonna stop at the child size but once you see that it goes all the way to round number 20 for doing the adult size as well. So I'm gonna be using the blue background because we're bringing back that white that we so love. Let's bring, bring that back now and let's start. So let's begin with the slip knot and still using the same size hook, same yarn and we're just using white today. So let's begin to do the label. So we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and coming into the very first chain way down here where I'm pinching uh, you're going to put in ten half double crochets. So the circle is made up of, of ten sections. So that's one and two. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10. So it's a nice full circle just like that. If you're left with any holes in the middle you can just take a darning needle and just close that off with another piece of string and then just attach it to the top of the first one. Remember that this chain that you skipped over is not included in that. So just go into the first half double crochet to join it. Just like that. So let's move on to round number two. So as we progress we're going to then chain up two does not count as anything and in the first one that you did the join with you're going to put in two half double crochets and guess what? In fact every stitch all the way around for round number two is gonna be two half double crochets into each one of them. So one and two. 
and then you're just going to join it to the first half double crochet when you get back around. So just two half double crochets in each stitch all the way around for round number two. When you get all the way back around just join it to the top of the first half double crochet. So now we're going to continue along. Now in rows number three all the way to ten and all the way to the end even for the adults it's always gonna be an incremental growth that will be the same. So in number three we're going to chain up two and we're gonna do a, a half double crochet into the first stitch that we're doing and that's the same one that you did the attaching with. It may be awkward to get to. <laughs> Maybe I'm making up stories too. You never know right? So going into the first one just take your time and then the next one will have two half double crochets into the same one. So one and two. So the incremental growth on this one is that there's gonna be one in the first one two into the next one and then two one and then two. Please do that all the way around for round number three. When coming up all the way back around the last one will have two half double crochet in, in there in order to keep balance and then you just join it to the first half double crochet that you started with. So that was round number three. So what I want you to do is that I want you to carry on your rounds just like the continuous growth that I mentioned. So I'm gonna show you one more time. So this one is gonna be chaining of two. Doesn't count as anything and now this time the first one plus the next one will be sitting by itself and then the next one has two. Do you see that growth? So last time it was one by itself and then two. This time there's two by itself and then two. So there's one by itself and two by itself and then two into this one. So you're, this is round number four. You're gonna go for the child size all the way to round number ten. So then the next round is gonna be chaining up two, one into the next three and then two. Three and then two and then the row out the round after that is that chaining up um, two then there's gonna be four in a row by itself and then two four and by itself and so by the time you get to round number ten there will be seven by itself and then two seven by itself and two. So then as you carry on into the adult size when I'm flipping through the pages here off camera is that you'll finally end in round number sorry 22 of the adult size there's gonna be 222 or 220 crochet uh, double, half double crochets sorry and then you'll end up with 19 half double crochets and then two 19 and two. So just look at the pattern and just follow the incrementation of growth and then meet me back here and then we'll uh, figure out how to write the word pop on top of this label. So at this point in the tutorial I've gone all the way. I did it a little bit bigger than what the pattern suggested. So it's not the child size that's a little bit bigger because I added extra strips on the on the sides. So I went all the way to round number 12 and then what I decided to do is that because uh, I went to 12 I then went one more round of just single crochet in the yellow and that was just one in each and then I did the same thing with the border that I did with the mystery and then what it is it's one single crochet in the one and then it's doubled and then a treble into the next and then in the next one is treble and then double and then the next one is a single crochet. So the repeat pattern for that is single crochet and then the next stitch has a double and a treble. The next stitch has a treble and a double and then it's single and then you repeat that all the way around. So this will give you a nice raised edge. I had extra yellow so why not use it right? So I actually made it slightly bigger so that is awesome. You can make this kind of border if you want to as long as that the outside stitches are divisible by four and it's an even number. So I ended up with 120 stitches and if you divide that by four it gives you an equal number. So what we're gonna now do is let's figure out how to draw the letters and be able to put the pop on there. I might do something more creative as I'm, I, I am improvising a little bit. So I will show you how this is done. Let's begin to draw the word pop. So what we're going to do is that the worst thing you can do is start and then you end up getting to the final P and then you don't have enough space. So the best way to do this is that you know you know it's gonna be on an angle so it doesn't matter which angle that you kind of turn this on just commit to it right away. And then what you just do is just take a, pair, a, spe a spare piece of string and then just draw it. So just kind of bring it underneath the stitches. You probably can't see that here on camera. So just draw it up and just bring it in and out of some stitches as you're going. So this is just going to be a marker for you to be able to follow. So it's it's what's known as surface crochet where we're gonna do a single crochet onto the surface and it's better to be able to draw this out and have the word uh, being spelled in properly as you go. So what you can just do is just drag it in and out of the stitches and spell your word 
that you'll want to spell. So just drag it underneath the stitches just to hold it and then you'll be able to adjust things. So as you uh, are seeing this you want to be able to change it as you go. So what I want to do is that I want to drag it in and out and when I come back I'm gonna have it all spelled out. I'm gonna take my time. I am gonna improvise a little bit. I'm going to just change the lettering a little bit and uh, but this is how it's done and then what you're going to do is then surface crochet over top of it which I'll show you how to do in a bit. So with my spare piece of yarn I drew the word pop. I just had to align it a couple times. What I'm looking for is equal amount of spaces before it hits the borders at the top here and what you can do is that I'm kind of high in the bottom here so I can kind of adjust things as I go but the idea here is to be able to kind of line it up so that it makes like it it makes a lot of sense. So I'm really far from the edge here, not so much here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna retry this again and again I'm just gonna pull out what I think is thing and it, it's a neat kind of thing, right? So what I wanna do is follow the lines up all the way. So follow this line here. This is where it is on this side. So I'm gonna come down a little bit further and I wanna look straight down. So I'm gonna come back a little bit and then I'm gonna drag it up. So I'm just gonna keep on going up. The idea is to try to get most of it into position before and I'm looking at the distance here. Keep going up. So this is the line here coming up around. So, so it's way too high to come up all the way there. So that's where the end of the P will be was right here. So I'm keeping it across and then I'm going across here. See it's better to do it like this than it is to start crocheting what you think is permanently in position. So you'll need, you'll see that it's not as like it's really boxy at this point but it doesn't really matter um, because once you crochet it then you can finalize it but you need to keep an eye on where your edging is or sorry where your letters are. Um, I have seen this and I've done it myself where you think you know what you're doing and then once you start crocheting you start realizing that you're off and then there's no point in no return. So here I can see my P is straight down kind of like that. I can see that I'm pretty close to the edges here. So now I'm ready to surface crochet then. So now what we're going to do is that we have the word pop now written here and we now want to make it the final. So what we have to do here is just leave an extra long tail here and we're just going to create a chain. So the chain will be the length of the letter. So you can follow the letter up and then around and back and then stop. So there really is no um, measurement at all. You're just gonna chain and you even may want to just put single crochet back down the other side of it just to make it even more thicker. I've done that with the hot dog snuggle sack to make the actual um, toppings a little more thick. So and it's a really kind of a really quite easy to be honest with you on how you do it. So I'm just not uh, counting at all. So I'm just gonna take a look at it, measure it. Look I'm almost done already. It's one thing I love about this yarn. Most projects don't take very long. So now looks like I'm done. So what I'm gonna do is see that you have the perfect letter P and now what I'm gonna do is that I am going to just um, single crochet on the back loop only of the chain, the entire chain coming back in the other direction and what this will do is that it will thicken it up and make it probably better to sew down. It doesn't say to do that again. You know creativity is very subjective and you have to improvise when you think you should. So just do that for each one of the letters and then you're gonna sew that into position and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So all my letters are now strategically in position and I've tied them just with a loose knot just down so that you can actually just see the shape and I took out the outline that was in behind. So what I wanna do is that I wanna start off and I'm gonna start off in the middle here with the pop, with, with sorry with the O and I wanna get that into position so that I can position my A's nicely. So because nothing is actually fastened down at this point you can be able to improvise and do anything that you wish. Now when I finished off doing the the um, chain I have an extra long tail and I'm gonna use that as my fasten in. So this is how you would do the kernels down also to the to the project as well. So leaving the ties in position I want to just uh, kind of turn it so it's easier for me. I like to be able to go in like this. So I'm just gonna go down 
and into the project and it hits underneath the white area and I wanna come back out. So when I come back out, what I wanna make sure is that I don't stay out for very long, meaning that when I uh, come out, I wanna dive in to like the strand right after it. So I just look at it and I just dive immediately back in. So if you're gonna skip a lot of space to come back out, just make sure it's done on the back side and not on the front. So all I'm just gonna do is just trace this letter now with this yarn and I wanna be strategic about it as well as um, like not too loose about it either and I'm just gonna go in and out of the project like this. So that's all you're gonna do then to fasten these letters down. Take your time, this matters and you wanna do a good job of it at the same time as well and then you'll notice that it won't move. And what I'm gonna do for this particular case is that I'm gonna go down on the other side so I'm staying close to this side so I'm gonna come down on this side to make sure that it's really fastened down at that point. So take your time and enjoy and I'll see you in just a few minutes after this is done. So now I'm back and I've got my pop now sewn on. Let's show you what the back looks like. So you can see that I've dived in and out of the back and I'm good to go. So I still have an extra long strand here to attach it to the actual container. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to attach this to the face that we have. So you have to decide whether you are going to tilt it one way or the other and I'm a kind of guy that I like to have it tilt this way. It's just more of my own personal preference like this one. I just feel like that that's the right way to do it. So what I wanna do is that I wanna look where it's positioned here on the picture and I want to just try to align it towards what I want to do and then I'm gonna take the yellow and I'm going to go in and out of the outside in and out of that project and then I'm gonna come in the inside and just tack down the middle so that it's completely stabilized in order to go. So now we have to bring back the other project and place this onto the face and we'll go from there. So I put the side that I want to have facing out up. So the top of the container is in that direction there. The butter flap that I already put on there is already there. I have not put any kernels on yet. So it appears in the photo that the label goes on pretty much just over where it switches uh, in order to get bigger here in the bottom. So you got to see how it opened up. So I want to get roughly to that area and I wanna lay this down on top and I'm gonna put it up on an angle and I'm looking towards the stripes to see where things are and I'm just going to then take the darning needle and I'm gonna go in and out of the yellow here, in and out of the project all the way around and then fasten back off. So just make sure that it's right where you want it to go before you start that and I'm going to stand up for a bit and uh, look at, look down on it, make sure it's right and then sew it in. So I've already shown you how to sew things together and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna sew down this middle section here so that it completely stays sta stabilized. So my pop now label is now permanently affixed to it. So now it's time for the popcorn kernels. So we haven't attached anything yet as far as the back half of this, but now it's time to do the kernels. So what you have to do if you do not have a butter flap, and again this was optional, is that you were going to start attaching your particular popcorn to the top edge of the existing box. So like a popcorn box. So what you have to do is that you have to look at this, you have to get rid of all your tails first before you do this and this is the way that the popcorn looks facing down but remember popcorn when it goes into a box it's every which way. So when you go to position this you want to be strategic about the different colors that you're having and uh, even if you wanted to use a third color so you won't want to put them in like this. You know some of them may want to be like upside down and etc and just randomly do it. So in order to get the particular box of popcorn you have to start stacking on top of each other if you don't have a butter flap. So you have to start attaching right in this section here just like I showed you and then any ones that you want to attach up here you have to then attach it to the behind as you go up. Okay so it's like a building layers and etc. So and if you have no butter flap then you can slip some of them in behind in order to make the illusion that it's inside the box. So if you have a butter flap like I do what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start off on one side on the butter flap and I try to make sure that the popcorn always overlays into the box area so that you really can't see the line here, the butter flap. And I'm gonna start on one side and start working my way across. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna lay them all out on the table first and then I'm going to position and then look at it and make a determination. I've got extra here so that I can make some look like they're actually falling out of the box so I can push them uh, you know anywhere I want to and then sew them directly down to the project. 
Once this is done then, and you're almost done your project, you just have to put your boxes together to make the snuggle sack just like so. Now my studio table is not big enough to do this particular process so I'm gonna go back upstairs, get out the dining room table and then lay this down and then start looking where all my popcorn is gonna go and then I'm gonna be back and we'll figure out how to put this together which is li literally the last part. So I'll meet you back in just a few minutes but me it'll probably be an hour or so. We'll see you again real soon. So now we're back and I have the inside of the back. Now your inside of the back will not have the popcorn on the back. I'm doing something different on my own. So and it will not have the butter flap if you haven't done that as well. So you'll just have a nice clean look that you have here. So this is the back side. So this is the wrong side. The, the good side is facing down. And now behind the camera I'm going to bring in my one that I have now is the front. And what I need to do is just lay it down over top of it. Just like you see here. And I just have to match the edging to it. So all I'm just gonna do now is just match the red. I'm not gonna worry about the butter flap if you put that on there. It's just there just to hold the kernels. And all I'm just gonna do is work my way now with the darning needle to sew the edges shut all the way down. So when I get to the very bottom of this what I would want to do if it were me and I were you, the stripes are gonna match each other. So when you get to the striping area I want you to change your yarn to the white. As you get to the white therefore it will not be uh, showing like any different. And then you're gonna change it to red and then white and etc. And then you're gonna come up the other side and just go completely all the way up and then you're good to go. So this would be how you would complete this snuggle sack. This is a really cute uh, idea. I think this would make a really great present for somebody and uh, really quite amazing for Stitch Flicks. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm not going to show you how to sew those together. We've been sewing all along and it's all straightforward from here. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.